Hello, mamas. What the heck is up? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I want to talk about something that is probably just seasonal depression, but I'm going to pretend like it's something that everyone else is going through right now so that I don't feel it completely insane. I want to talk about how it kind of, at least to me, feels like we are in the end times, okay? It really feels like we are on like the series fucking finale of like humanity at the current moment to me. It almost feels as if all the things that you would like see in like sci-fi movies or like horror movies where like the world is ending, like post-apocalyptic type beats is like just happening in front of our eyes. And I know that I can't really tell if like the things going on in the world right now are like a normal amount of bad things or an excessive amount of bad things because I've only been on this planet for 23 years. I don't know, like, when things get really bad, is that, like, what's going on right now? Like, in for example, like, in so many post-apocalyptic movies, you have, like, pandemics killing everyone. That was COVID. You have artificial intelligence taking over and killing everyone. That's AI happening right now. That's chat GBT. You have like nuclear war. You have, and then that's like pretty much very, very close to what we are at right now. And I, I kind of like, I know this is something a lot of people thought about in 2020. They were like, is the, Hey, hi, is the world ending? What's up? What's going on with that, with all that? And then I just realized today, damn, it's like really actually starting to feel like it's ending. Before our eyes, like literally in this, every three months, basically, like there's like some new thing that just pushes my perception of where humanity is at to like a further realm of dread. Like three months ago, I don't even think ChatGBT existed and AI still felt like a freaking a freaking, a freaking, like, a freaking, like, sci-fi movie thing that could not exist in real life. And now we have ChatGBT where you can, like, literally just get anything done for you that involves, like, text. And I bet in three months, we're literally going to have, like, freaking robots walking around, like, controlled by AI. I bet Siri is going to be, like, an AI that'll just, like, run our phone for us. Like, we'll just, like, literally set our phone down on our bed, and Siri will be like, here's what you want to see for the day. And she'll know because she's AI and knows us on a probably scary level. And all of that, you know, brings me a great deal of fear. And, you know, the AI thing I get, like, excites a lot of people. It's cool to, like, be able to hear fucking Donald Trump and Joe Biden, like, playing Fortnite together on TikTok. But for me, at least, it's a little scary. And... You know, coupling that with all the other things going on in the world, it really is starting to feel like the end times. And I'm not really, like, someone that's uh, subscribed to the idea that, like, the world is going to end. Like, the rapture is going to start. I know that's, like, a biblical kind of thing. Um, And you all know I grew up Catholic, but I just don't really believe in that. I don't believe... I, I do believe that, you know, humanity will die out and, like, the world will end at some point, but it's not going to be like one day that that shit happens. It's almost like a slow progressive death. It's like, it, 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 you know, it's, it's like when your plant isn't getting enough sunlight and then it just like flops over on your counter and you just leave it there. Like that's kind of what I see like us being in the midst of. And I know I sound like Debbie fucking Downer right here. I'm like, guys, the planet is that I mean I can't even say that like as a joke because like literally is like global warming actually just does exist and is killing us but like I don't want to seem like de- and and I'm sure there's always people in my position like at any given time there's probably like at least a good chunk of people just thinking like damn it's not looking good for humans right now and I know I'm just like one of those fishes in the sea but I can't be the only one that thinks like we have like an abnormally large amount of things to deal with on our plate like outside our lives just like going on in the in the world and so I was thinking like has it ever felt like this in my previous in my previous years of existence on this planet like 
in my life has ever felt this dire to just be like a human existing on earth. And I can't really say for sure because, you know, obviously like my brain probably only fully developed like four years ago. Like that was probably the completion date for the construction in my brain of like building the jello that's like barely running me as a functioning human being. Like I, I feel like if I look at like my childhood, it was like my childhood and you know, things were a lot easier and I didn't also know what was going on in the world for like a big chunk of my childhood so I can't really like base I can't compare what's happening now in the world versus like back then like the the amount of like historical events that I can remember from like my childhood are like yeah that's about it like uh like the black eyed peas releasing like music videos or like um when I Carly ended like that's the only like historical shit that I can really remember but it's not like there wasn't crazy things going on. Like when I was like two, 9-11 happened. Did I know what was going on? No, I was a baby and a toddler and probably shitting myself. So it's like I can't really compare like now to then. But it makes me curious. Like I really want to talk to like a 90-year-old person. And this is like the only time when I would say that. When I'd say I would want to talk to like an elderly person like voluntarily. But it'd be very interesting to hear from like an old person's perspective who has maybe seen like a fucking world war or something like are things bad right now are we doing okay are we doing good but also i feel like that method you know if i just called up my grandma and was like hey thing uh, how are things for everyone right now that also wouldn't be um you know the most unbiased opinion because if you're old i feel like you're always, I mean, this goes for anyone, but I feel like you're always going to be nostalgic for the past. And we have this bias as humans to think that the past is always like better than now. Like there's always like, I feel like people on Twitter or just like social media will always be posting about like, uh, I miss like the music of It'll be like 2015 and bitches will be like, I miss the music of 2010. Then it'll be 2020 and bitches will be like, I miss the music of 2015. Like, it's so much easier to like romanticize the past and the memories associated with it rather than just like accepting the future as maybe something that's possibly as good or better. And I fall victim to that a lot. Like, I always am just feeling like there's no new good movies out. There's no, and especially there's no new good music out. Like... I used to love listening to the radio station that played pop in my city. I would love to hear like the, the, what the new pop music was and it felt so fresh. And now I turn that shit on and it literally sounds like like AI was plugged into like GarageBand and like they got some random person off TikTok to like sing a melody in a ballad and then they like threw it together and made a song. Like, like Megan Trainor's music. We're not going to get into that. So like... Oh, hey, police. So it makes me think, like, genuinely, like, are things just worse now? And obviously music is, like, a subjective thing, okay? there's It's very hard to, like, quantify if music is better now versus, like, say, 2010. Because, I, I mean, there's some ways you could do it. You can maybe look at, like, the average review for, like, all the albums put out this year versus like 2010 and like add it up but even then it's like you can't really compare that but like at least to me at least to me it feels like things are getting worse or at least less quality and like less iconic well, another thing is we will never have a, mm, i guess like to co to compare this to like how social media is now like youtube in 2010 to like 2000 2018 let's say you know there was like stars like actual like youtube stars people that i looked up to so much that i thought were like larger than life and i feel like now on youtube and tiktok and every social media platform it's like we just have like a billion little influencers and there's no one that is like truly magnificent that like stands out and it's like wow i cannot believe that this magnificent person has been birthed and it's like you know how people always refer to like beyonce as like the goat of music essentially 
And it's like, are we even getting new people like that? Like, who? tell me who the fuck that is, like, popular right now that's, like, new. Like, say an artist from the past 10 years will be will go down as being, like, a goat on the level of, like, Beyonce or someone. They're, they're, we're just not making people like that anymore. They're just, like, the factory that was pumping out the Beyonce's shut down. And now what? Like, the cl- if you look at, like, kind of, like, the it people of our generation right now like even even they i don't think will stand the test of time like so let's say for actors like timothy chalamet is probably like the male killing it right now in the acting space i don't see him becoming like a freaking like talent that people will talk about 500 years from from now same with harry styles for music like you know, he's got a moment now, but I don't see him being, like, a, a forever superstar. And then, like, the female acting side, Jenna Ortega, like, same thing. Kind of riding a moment, riding a wave. Will anyone be really that, like, obsessed even, like, 30 years from now? Like, it's things like that where I, I don't know if it's me being pessimistic or just me realizing what's really going on. But, like, I I don't see... Anything iconic happening ever. And like, it's okay. Like, it's really starting to sound like I'm just depressed. But that's, I really don't think that's the case. Because like, my mental health has probably been the best that it's been in a very, very long time. So I don't think it's, maybe that's, maybe that is why I kind of have these opinions. Because I feel like when I'm sad, I'm gaining, I'm gaining so much more like, emotion and engagement from like the media I consume so like if I'm like like right now I'm chilling I'm happy if the world's greatest like sad song comes out I'm probably not gonna care because I'm chilling but if I'm doing bad like and say freaking uh say driver's license comes out I'm gonna take that song and I'm gonna run with it and I'm going to be like this is the most intense ballad ever created Y'all, I'm gonna be so real. That train of thought derailed. Okay, I caught it. That's the sound of the train going by. Caught the train. Yeah, I probably just have seasonal depression. <laughs> but it makes no sense. Okay, you know what? We're just making this whole episode about me, mama's drama, mama. Um, I'm creating the drama. I'm doing fine. Like it's very weird because so many aspects of my life that, you know, we're suffering and struggling before, are doing very well right now. Like, on levels that I didn't think were possible, okay? I go, like, months and months and months without thinking, like, any really dark thoughts. That sounded, like, so, like... I have dark thoughts. My favorite show was Wednesday, type B, but, like, um... No, like, I really feel like I'm doing fine. So, like, what is this, like, what is this going on in my brain? Like, I probably sound so crazy right now because y'all are probably, like, y'all, it's just, like, the earth is fine. We're we're not in the end times. You're being dramatic. But, no, it really does feel like it. So, like, if this whole episode is me just realizing that the universe isn't gaslighting me and I'm literally, I just... I'm sad because it's raining all the time and cold. Like, that'll really be a bummer. But no, I'm reversing that idea. I don't think I have seasonal depression. I think there's genuinely something up. You know, (laughs) I think global warming is like, or just climate change in general is like, obviously bad, but something has to be said about how its effects on like like just knowing that our planet is dying and like pretty much no one's doing anything to stop it is kind of a suffocating feeling and kind of maybe spills over into other aspects of life so like you know the planet is pretty important to us it is the rock that we live on and the the only place that humanity entirely exists four like minus like 10 people in on the space station right now um it is kind of very depressing to know that that is just dying before our eyes and 
it's not like dying because like there's you know people are just like stumping on it and they're like oh i hate the earth bah, bah, bah. no it's dying because like almost everything that we do that's fun fucking causes global warming um so it's not just like you know we can like all really just easily team up and stop it it's like no oh you want to drive over to um chuck e cheese's and get a pepperoni pizza from there well first of all the car ride is going to generate co2 which will further crack open the hole in the ozone layer and then when you get to chuck e cheese's it's freaking they got the lights on they got the animatronics running who fucking knows how much electricity it takes to run chuck e cheese himself and make him move around and stuff um boom bada bing bada boom you order your cheese pizza it's got dairy on it it's got pork on it you know farm animals take a lot they they're farting let's be fucking real the the farm animals are farting and shitting and that is creating boom bigger hole in the ozone layer so it's like like you could think of the most simple thing that you enjoy doing and it is somehow contributing to climate change and i think that's a hard pill to swallow i don't think that's a hard pill to swallow i know that's a hard pill to swallow like you literally got to be like a greta thunberg ass to like actually have like zero guilt when it comes to just like existing and not contributing to climate change like she is she's walking she's taking the bus when she wanted to go to america she took a boat do you know how crazy it is to take a sailboat across the Atlantic Ocean? That's insane. And so that's why, like, like y'all know I do a lot of traveling. And I do feel very bad, like, how much CO2 I'm putting into the atmosphere. Because I'm like, ooh, I want to go to Japan and eat yummy curry rice. Or, ooh, I miss my dog. Let me fly to Canada. Like, things like that. They're so... And, and it's not like planes, like, do a little bit of pollution. Like, they're doing quite a bit. So I I always try to like offset my flights whenever I go on a flight, whenever I'm on like a vacation or something. And that is like probably mostly greenwashing. Like if I'm being real, what the fuck is, what the, what is planting like two trees in like the Amazon really doing for like the jet fuel that I just pooped out because I wanted to go to like Miami or something. I don't know. I use Miami as a example i haven't been to miami since last year okay that that is a good example i've been anyways <laughs> it's basically what i'm getting at to reel that whole point in it's kind of hard to just realize that almost everything fun is gonna create a little bit of climate change so to know that like our planet's dying i think is like kind of the tent pole problem for why things are starting to feel so dark um and also i just think there's so many systems whether it be in like our media social media that just like reward negativity um you know one of the like most popping youtube channels right now is sunny v2 and that channel as entertaining as it is is like solely dedicated to like the downfall of like youtubers and celebrities and it's not like the, he doesn't like pick stories where it's like this is the downfall of ninja but then he discovered the power of true laughter and made a complete comeback and saved his career it's like literally just like ninja was a streamer he was so popular but then he started sucking he started sucking real big and real long um and now he's broke and no one watches him and then the video ends and it's like <laughs> shit okay damn it's like i see more of an appetite for content like that that's focusing on the negative focusing on like the downward spirals of people and that's a little bit scary to see and i i saw this like video it was like a video essay on youtube on how like um the the media that we have during our times like the like the media during each time period is like reflective of the reality outside so i believe it was like around wartime like like during the vietnam war or some shit like a lot of horror movies came out and like 
I'm I'm fully getting like this timeline wrong. It was during like some really like bad time period, like either the Great Depression, like World War One, World War Two, or like the Vietnam War, something like that. Like um, it that's when all these horror movies came out. Um really dark movies and then like when things were good when like the economy's booming shit like that that's when all the happy movies come out that's when like all the cute rom-coms come out but it's like you know what we have coming out right now is like literally horror movie after horror movie after horror movie so i'm starting to think like maybe like maybe we really are in the bad place and like that is one of the only things one of the only signs that have like confirmed my beliefs i'm like damn it's like there's like a lot of horror movies coming out recently that must mean that the the world is ending <laughs> so i think like i've been feeling this way the thing is i it, th- another reason why i don't think this is seasonal depression is because i've been feeling this like for a fat minute now it's not like summer comes along and i'm like ah! Well, the sun just came out, and now the days are longer, and I'm and everything's warmer. Like maybe to some extent, I'm like a little bit happier when the sun is out longer. Like duh, but I I've pretty much felt like the the humanity being in a flop era or like a downward spiral for like I'd say a couple of years now. Obviously, COVID was like a big catalyst that like broke everyone's brain and like realized, damn, like our like humanity. And society as a whole can just, like, fall apart that easily. And then I think that also just really got me thinking, like, okay, well, what's going to be, like, the the straw that breaks the camel's back, if you will? Like, what what's – if it's not COVID, because we mostly, for the most part, got over that, what's going to be the thing that actually takes us out and, like – ends humanity for real is it like going to be like a giant earthquake is it going to be another pandemic is it going to be global warming and i think to some degree global warming like will be the thing that at, maybe not wipes humanity off the face of the earth but like you know does a number on us i think a lot of people see the end of the world as like you know how it is in so many movies where like all the nukes go off at once like vladimir putin had a bad day and pushes the button and then everyone just nukes each other and then we die but like that wouldn't result in like a full eradication of humans and i don't really see there being a full eradication of humans holy shit how do we get this dark i don't see like humans just dying off uh maybe ever because unless there's like an ice age or some shit even that like we have technology we could figure it the fuck out like it would have to be like a pandemic that is like so deadly that it kills like nine and ten people and spreads like everywhere in one day like even then people would still survive there's bitches that don't leave their house and would be fine so i don't think like if you're if you're ever thinking that there's gonna be like a day where the apocalypse just comes and everyone freaking dies that's not gonna happen like, let's put on our thinking caps here. We're going to be fine. It's never going to be that scary. But, you know, I think there's a very likely chance that, like, the quality of life or even the lives of people will be lost in, like, big events. Whether it be, like, like I just, it, it really is crazy just being in L.A. knowing that, like, the big one earthquake is going to hit one day and just kill, like, a ton of people here and but i just am just going about my day i just went for a bike ride and it doesn't freak me out like that's kind of crazy um and then other thing like well okay like i don't know if y'all know this but and uh, i'm not like a scientist or anything but like our our solar system is literally on a crash course with like the Andromeda galaxy, like the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy. And like, I think something, some billion amount of years is going to like collide. And the earth as we know, it will be like literally fucking evaporated and disintegrated. Um, like, like look at the, you look at your floor and look at the room around you and look at your house. Like know that it is a guarantee that this shit will all just be dust one day. The, it, it, even like in a point where like we don't even we won't even have days anymore because the earth just like literally will not exist it will be smashed to smithereens and everything you know and everything you love will probably be dead and gone by then 
<laughs> we're getting like really dark, but there's that that's just how it is. And you know, you can think of it that way, like hum like the earth surely will die at some point far in the future, but being more realistic, humans will probably die off a lot, la 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 sooner. I'm talking like I don't see humanity existing as it does today for even another five hundred years. I would be really amazed if we just had like cities and you know, you could go to the park and shit like that. Like, just life as it is right now, even remotely similar to how it is right now in 500 years. I don't see that happening. And humans by nature, I was, like, really thinking about this today. Like, humans by nature just, like, have to have fucking beef with each other. It's really stupid. And I don't think, like, we're going to get to a point where we'll be, like, so technologically like certified or like we're not going to find a way to get along with each other and with technology to like make ourselves as a species last forever and like go to different planets like i don't see us like if you've seen the movie interstellar um a bit the, the main plot of that is like global warming is making like everyone on earth like slowly start to die because there's no more crops and there's like starvation everywhere and in like the NASA in that movie, like the space people in the government were like trying to um, still send people to space and like find a planet for us to live on. And all the people on Earth who were like literally didn't have money to buy a fucking potato were like, can y'all stop? Can y'all actually please stop? Like we need to worry about what's on Earth right now. Um, and that stopped like the scientists and stuff from like funding money to send people to space. And in in the end of the movie, spoiler, 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 um, they end up, like, finding, like, I think a new planet or some shit to, like, set up a new colony for humans on, and then they pretty much abandon ship on Earth. But I don't see that happening for our current timeline and our current situation because, you know, people are putting all the focus on saving the planet before we go and try and, like, escape to other planets. And I think that makes sense. As much as I would be like, damn, they'd be lit to live on fucking Venus and have like a like a penthouse apartment on Mars or something. Let's be real here. Like, let's figure out how to like not boil our oceans and like raise the Earth's temperature by like four bajillion degrees before we like worry about sending like Elon Musk so he can like have a little pizza party on Mars. Like, let's be a little realistic. So that's that 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 movie is like really what I kind of see as like a parallel to our current like society because we're we're probably going to be fine and even the people like that are left on earth like say humans find a way to get off earth and they're just like living on um in like another solar system or something there's always going to be people on earth like still living it'd be very hard to kill all 8 billion people on Earth unless it literally just cracked in half and we all floated into space because there was no gravity. Like, even if temperatures rise, like, freaking 10 degrees and there's no food, there's still many people, like, living in the Earth in little tunnels and shit. Like, I'm gonna be so real. This conversation got so off track to the point where I don't even like really understand what I was what original point I was trying to make but basically it feels like we're getting ever close to that point to apocalypse and I have basically no proof other than there's a lot of horror movies coming out recently and the fact that I don't want to probably accept that I suffer from seasonal affective disorder and gets sad when there's a lot of clouds in the sky and it's not hot beach weather. But I just wanted to rant about this. And I want, you know, if any of y'all are feeling existential dread in the air, please let me know. Please comment. Um, but let's read some drama before we wrap this baby up. Uh, so I don't know who this was from because I loaded up the comment and then I went to the voice recording app on my iPad, which is what I record my podcast on. And I went back to YouTube and it went away. But I, basically the gist of it was, um, Ben, I see a lot of people 
uh, arguing about sexualizing celebrities online and on TikTok. What are your thoughts? I'm paraphrasing. This is something that I see like a lot in comment sections. Um, you'll see like an edit of like literally like random celebrity. Let's call him Cheryl McGee. And Cheryl McGee is like doing a little dance. And then the comments are like, the things I would do to Cheryl McGee. Okay, that name is freaking me the fuck out. Like say it's like Bobby, Bobby Jr., and Bobby Jr. did another did a TikTok dance, and the comments are like, "Bobby Jr., you are. Why don't you bob your head over to my J?" <laughs> not even funny. Not even really funny. Um, or and just like comments that are like, you know, sexualizing someone on like a video that isn't even like necessarily sexual. Some, this is an unpopular opinion, but some bitches really think that that is, like, as bad as, like, Putin sending the, like, pushing the nuclear button to, like, sending a nuke to New York to obliterate, like, it's really not that deep. Obviously, some people take this, like, way too far, like, um, I think if, say there's, like, a public figure that is, like, constantly being, like, sexualized in their comments, um, and then they say, like, hey, y'all, this makes me uncomfortable, please stop then like don't do that obviously and if people keep doing that then that is a toxic group of people um but i don't like it's not the worst thing in the world like it, some people are just freaks in the comments and they don't mean like too much by it like them saying like bobby mcgee i want to put you in the trunk of my car and do things to you until the until the sunrise or shit like that are they going to be like go to Bobby McGee's mansion and put him in the fucking trunk of their car and get no like it's really not that deep and you really see this like with um I notice this with like a lot of like K-pop stands or uh like so like basically celebrities or public figures that people see as like they're ooh -woo, like small ooh, ooh -woo, like this person is so small S M O L um, they are so cute and innocent, and then, like, someone will make, like, a edit being, like, I want to do things to Bobby McGee, and then, like, all the, all the, all the stands will be, like, how fucking dare you sexualize, and it's, like, who the fuck cares, <laughs> it's, it's just not that deep, I think if you, like, so there's, like, you just, like, go into more detail about taking it too far, if you're, like, I've seen like TikToks where like someone will be wearing like gray sweatpants or like maybe a girl will be wearing like a white t-shirt and then people start commenting like actually really fucking nasty comments being like, I can see the outline. That is, whoa, their partner. That's a little crazy. That's a crazy thing to just type. Um, mind you, I think 90% of the TikToks that you see of dudes wearing gray sweatpants, they did that shit intentionally and they deserve to be called the fuck out for it. But like, you know, most of the time, like, just don't like leave a comment, but also like back to the gray sweatpants conundrum. If, if say some thirst trapper dude posts a TikTok in gray sweatpants, you can see the whole sea cucumber and everything. Like, that's exactly what they want you to do. They want you to leave comments being like, eh, eh, looked at me first. <laughs> Don't feed into that. Don't play into that. Let the fucking video die. Don't, like, like, you, so, <clears throat> I could get into this in a whole other episode. But, like, some people forget that, like, if you engage with a video, you are helping the video blow up. So if you truly don't like a video, hit not interested and move on. Don't like it. Don't comment it. Bozos really act like commenting is going to make something go away, or if it is like a harmful video or something, they are like saving the day by saying this was a bad video. No, bitch, you just made the video go to 10 other people. But um, anyways, you know, obviously don't be a freaking creep, but I also see the other side of people being like overprotective of their cute little ooh, -ooh small favorite celebrities and then someone's like oh they're sexy and then they get like ballistic missiles sent to their doorsteps from the stands that have like protective god savior complexes 
So, yeah, I'm kind of indifferent to it. I kind of don't really care. Um, also, bitches just aren't, like, sexualizing me, so I don't really have, like, anything to worry about on that front. But anyways, with that all being said, Mamas, thank you for tuning into another episode. Um, I have a fun announcement. This is going up Wednesday, but tonight I will be on TV. Yes, that is correct. I um am in Nick News, the new show on Nickelodeon, which is news on Nickelodeon. And I'm uh, I'm really grateful to be a news correspondent on there. And I have my first ever segment airing at 7 p.m. Eastern, which is 6 p.m. Central Time Zone on Nickelodeon. Tune in. Uh, show support to your boy. Um, and also, if you um, if if you like post me in your story, I'll repost it because I want to see who's watching. I want to see who's tuning in. Uh, take a picture when my segment comes on. It's really scary and nerve wracking to be on TV for the very first time, but I'm very excited. And uh, it's also just a really good show. We have a lot. I have such good um, news correspondents with me as well, who are amazing and so funny and so talented, uh, and have such big hearts. And they're also just really fun to watch. So check it out. Nick News, Wednesday, this Wednesday, March 29th, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yup. If you enjoyed this episode, please uh, leave a five-star review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your little you know, podcast at. And I'll see you all next Wednesday. Take care. Better the week it's true.